Good afternoon and welcome to RMU Live. Today is Monday, November 18th. I'm John Blinn. And I'm Ryan G. Coey. Here's what's happening now. A wanted sex offender from Connecticut was arrested after fleeing a traffic stop in Duquesne. According to authorities, an officer tried to pull over 39-year-old Daniel DeSirio at around 11.10 p.m. on Sunday. He made a U-turn and began to flee the scene. Police began to follow DeSirio until he crashed his vehicle into a Chevy Equinox at Commonwealth Avenue. DeSirio faces a long list of charges, and anyone with further information is asked to contact Allegheny County Police. A man in Homewood is in critical condition after a hit and run occurred overnight. The accident occurred around 4.30 this morning at 5th and Frankstown Avenues. The man was unconscious at a crosswalk when paramedics arrived and took him to a hospital. The driver left the scene. Police in Murraysville are reminding residents to lock their cars after several vehicles were broken into in the area. The Murraysville Police Department Facebook page said that several cars had items stolen from them on Saturday night. Authorities say that all of the thefts were from unlocked vehicles and could have been prevented by locking doors. No suspects have been named. A fire broke out in Denora overnight on Allen Avenue. Firefighters got everybody out safely. The investigation is ongoing as to what caused the fire. What started as a routine traffic stop resulted in several drug charges. Police in Bellevue found a large amount of marijuana, crack cocaine, and a loaded weapon in the car of Christian Nichols and Amanda Berry on California Avenue. Police say that the two made several attempts to hide the items in the center console. Officers also found several used syringes and a smoking pipe inside of the vehicle. Nichols pushed the officer during the traffic stop and faces several charges, including possession with intent to deliver, aggravated assault, resisting arrest, and carrying a firearm without a license. A man in Hampton Township was able to slip through his handcuffs to avoid being arrested. Police were called at 6 a.m. Sunday morning to report of, of people be running and screaming along Mill Road. Thomas Mellon Jr. was interviewed and attempted to leave his home after being ordered to remain. After trying to escape, officers put a hobble device and handcuffs on Mellon Jr. to keep him still. After different attempts to escape, Pittsburgh police were called to escort Mellon Jr. to the Allegheny County Jail. A man has been arrested in connection with a double shooting that took place in Carrick on Thursday. 20-year-old Desmond Jones is suspected of being one of three men to rob two teenagers. During the robbery, 23-year-old Cody Smith allegedly shot the two teenagers. One teen was shot in the back of the head when fleeing from the scene of the robbery, but was not fatally wounded. The two were able to report the incident after they ran to a friend's house on Brownsville Road. Officers have made an arrest after a fatal shooting in Wilkinsburg. Dylan Bartafay was arrested after authorities found 46-year-old Gregory Blair suffering from a gunshot wound on Center Street. Blair later died from the gunshot after being taken to the hospital. Authorities say that they identified Bartafay using security camera footage. He's being charged with criminal homicide. A man in Penn Hills was shot multiple times in his car Saturday night. After being tossed, he was... Uh, after being tossed out of his car and left on Manila Road overnight into Sunday, police were called around 8 p.m. where they found a 23-year-old victim lying. The victim was taken to a hospital in critical condition. The investigation is ongoing. People with information are being asked to call the police tip line at 1-833-ALL-TIPS. A man in Bethel Park is being held in the Allegheny County Jail for an alleged kidnapping and killing. Police say John Chapman killed 33-year-old Jamie Fenn who is believed to be dating Chapman. Chapman attempted to kill Fenn in Las Vegas by having Fenn believe they were going to on vacation and potentially moving there. A body was found in Las Vegas and they are investigating whether it is Fenn's body. The investigation is ongoing. A man has died after getting hit by a car in the Parkway West Sunday morning. Authorities reported that a 45-year-old man was hit by a car traveling outbound near the Banksville Road exit at approximately 5.25 a.m. Investigators say that the driver was not impaired and shouldn't face any charges, but a full investigation is still underway. Authorities also pointed out that it is illegal to walk along the interstate or parkways. The identity of the pedestrian has not been released. Two tow trucks were used to remove a pickup truck out of an embankment. The pickup truck happened... The incident happened on Morange and Idlewood Roads in Oakland. The truck allegedly swerved to avoid hitting another car and went down the embankment. Emergency responders were called to the incident at around 1 p.m. Two Allegheny County detectives were assaulted by an armed teenager on Friday night. After approaching 17-year-old Jemine Chandler, police told him he was getting arrested for having a gun. He ran away down 16th Avenue and fought the officers when they caught up to him. Both detectives were taken to the hospital for evaluations. 
Chandler is in the Allegheny County Jail with charges of assault and possession of a firearm. Now we will send it over to Sonu Babu, who is outside with the weather. How's it looking out there, Sonu? Thank you, John and Ryan. Right now I'm outside of the Nicholson Center and it's looking like a beautiful day if you look around me. And it's so much more different from when we had the first snow of the winter last week. That snow has melted away and it's now a high of 51 degrees with a 70% humidity and a 10% chance of rain. But it's going to stoop down to a low of 31 degrees tonight, so it's better if you guys stay inside tonight. That's all I have for you right now, but stay tuned to see if this weather holds up. Let's go over back to John and Ryan on the desk. Coming up after the break, Army Media Arts will be hosting a senior showcase and a sorority host of the male beauty pageant. Stay tuned to Arm You Live. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. That was a good A bar. I like that. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey. Jessica, I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to RMU Live. Robert Morris University's Department of Media Arts will be showcasing the work of graduating seniors. The event will feature work from digital cinema, television, photograph, and interaction and graphic design majors. The exhibition will be held from November 19th through December 13th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. in the Media Arts Gallery. Last Thursday, the Delta Phi Epsilon sorority hosted D for Dude a male beauty pageant to raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Army Century Mia's Scott McDaniel was at the event to give us a closer look. d for Dude is a male beauty pageant that we use that Delta Phi Epsilon hosts to raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I feel like if it's, a, if it's like a male beauty pageant, you know, more people will come to see because, you know, men are the, like, the general form of men, you know, just dancing and being like goofy isn't really like, you know, for some people, so I guess the men is like, the men doing the pageant just bring it as well. Plus it's just like for a good cause, you know, it's just like Um, so basically, um, anybody who's interested will come and talk to us and they'll each represent a different organization. You represent Fanny Delta? Fanny Delta. That's all Fanny Delta. Um, and then after that, um, they've matched people up with coaches, so I was matched up with Terry, I'm both in the band. Um, and so basically, he does most of the work. I'm just here to approve and have some guidance. But it's all him. It was actually pretty, it was really nice to have her as a coach. Because at first I didn't know what D for Dude was or like anything when he was at And then I found out she was my coach. It's the first meeting I couldn't make. So, and then like she told, she texted me, she was like, hey, I'm your coach. I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay. And then we've talked, we've been talking ever since, you know, telling me stuff about the, um, playing before, telling me stuff about the event itself, gave help me bounce ideas over for my talent. Um, Helping like even with outfit changes and not that outfit changes, but like my outfit and stuff. Like, oh my gosh, like having me up via my. 
For the full story on D for Dude and for more information on news, sports, and arts and entertainment, visit ArmyCenturyMedia.com. When, when we come back, Greg Sutton is in the studio for an update on Pittsburgh Sports. Stay tuned on RMU Live. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnice. She started helping me a little bit like me. I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So? I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting. Like you? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Welcome back to RMU Live. Vera Clemente, widow of Pittsburgh Pirates legend Roberto Clemente, has died at age 78. Clemente was hospitalized in San Juan in delicate health on November 1st. She was the chairwoman of the Roberto Clemente Foundation and a goodwill ambassador for Major League Baseball. Greg Sutton is at our sports desk, ready to give us a recap of Pittsburgh sports. What do you have for us, Greg? Well, John, the Steelers lost to the Cleveland Browns 21-7 last Thursday. Mason Rudolph threw for four interceptions and one touchdown. Baker Mayfield had scored one touchdown on the ground himself. And the Steelers play Cincinnati Bengals Sunday at 1 o'clock in Cincinnati. And at the end of the game, the Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph and Browns defensive end Miles Garrett started to argue, and Garrett continued to rip off Rudolph's helmet and hit him over the head with it. Afterwards, Steelers center Marquise Pouncey came to his, and, to, came to his side and punched Garrett, and another Browns player, Larry Ogunjobi, pushed down Rudolph. Suspensions ensued. Miles Garrett is suspended indefinitely, at least through the postseason. Larry Ogunjobi got a one-game suspension, and Marquise Pouncey received a three-game suspension. Both teams were also fined $250,000 each. Appeals are currently in discussion. Pens beat the Pittsburgh Penguins beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 6-1 Saturday. Dominic Cahoon scored two goals and had one assist, with Tristan Jari in net for the Penguins. He had 32 saves. The Pens will play tomorrow night at home against the New York Islanders. The Buccos are making offseason moves and filling up the vacant positions in their front office. They have found a new general manager, Ben Sherrington, was the GM of the Boston Red Sox for four years in winning the 2013 World Series. He was also the vice president of baseball operations for the Toronto Blue Jays. Ex-Red Sox manager John Farrell said, quote, you guys, you got a great guy to run things there in Pittsburgh. I can't say enough good things about him, end quote. This past week in the Western Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic League, or the Whippeal, had its championship games for the 6A, Quad A, Triple A, and Single A divisions. The 6A championship was Central Catholic in Pine Richland. Central Catholic won 10-7. The Quad A game was between Thomas Jefferson and Bell Vernon. Thomas Jefferson walked away with the crown 41-7. And the Triple A matchup was between Central Valley and Aliquippo, with Central Valley walking away with the overtime win 13-12. And in the Single A game, it was Clareton versus Stowe Rocks. Clarence to triumph over Stow Rocks, 41-19. to 19. That's all we have for sports right now. We'll see you guys in a bit. Coming up after the break, Google has announced a new gaming service. And what you should watch for this Thanksgiving in this week's Health Minute. Hey, Dad. 
I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie, nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad? Do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to RMU Live. Eating a big meal for dinner can leave you feeling uncomfortable, but consistently overindulging in the evening can lead to serious heart problems. Britt Conway explains in today's Health Minute. Sitting down for a nice meal is always a good way to end the day. Just make sure it isn't the biggest meal you've had all day. According to a preliminary study by the American Heart Association, women who consumed more of their daily calories later in the evening were at a greater risk for cardiovascular disease than women who didn't. Study participants tracked what they ate for one week at the beginning of the study and for one week 12 months later. Researchers found that while most study participants consumed some food after 6 p.m., those who consumed a higher proportion of their daily calories after that time had poor heart health. And with every 1% increase in calories consumed after 6 p.m., the likelihood of higher blood pressure, body mass index, and poor long-term control of blood sugar increased. And while this study only considered a small sample of 112 women, experts say it's an important step to understanding the connection between diet and cardiovascular risk factors. For today's Health Minute, I'm Britt Conway. Google is launching a new gaming service this week. The, the tech... The, The tech company on Tuesday will unveil uh, Static in 14 countries. It is a streaming service in stream for like, without needing to own a hard copy or even a console. Google will be complete, competing with a daunting list of rivals in the industry who are betting the future of video games lies in the cloud rather than just physical hardware. Microsoft is currently testing its Project X Cloud service, and Amazon is rumored to be working on its own cloud gaming service as well. Coming up after the break, Greg Sutton is back in our, in, in, our, in our sports center, ready to give us a rundown on everything RMU sports related. Stay tuned here on RMU Live. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met our niece. She started helping me a little bit like me. I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. 
Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Greg Stunt is, in, is back in our sports desk, raved for a quick recap of Robert Morris Sports. How's Robbie Bobby looking, Greg? Well, John, Robbie Bobby lost to Central Connecticut State 49-28 to on the football field. And the Blue Devils, what, Clonus and the Blue Devils went into halftime at 14 each. So the second half was plagued by turnovers for the RMU offense, and the Clonus will play their last regular season game against Sacred Heart at Joe Walton Stadium at noon. The men's basketball team was back to the MABC Invitational and won one of their games and lost the other on Friday. The Colonials beat the Howard Bison 85-65 to and then Saturday they lost to Toledo 56-70. to Robert Morris plays again Thursday in Chicago against the University of Illinois at Chicago Flames. Yesterday, RMU lost to Columbia 59-61. Esther Castillo scored 15 points and had to assist. Neka Azebo put up 14 points with three steals and one block. They play again at Kent State against the Kent State Golden Flash tomorrow. Robert Morris Hockey was on the road again against Bentley, sweeping the weekend on Friday and Saturday. Friday they won 6-4 with five different Colonials fighting the back of the net. And then Saturday they, they defeated Bentley 4-2. This weekend, Army will host the Air Force Falcons Friday and Saturday, both nights starting at 7.05. And there is no perfect team left on campus. The Colonials volleyball team lost their final regular season game against Long Island University, three sets to one. The conference tournament will be this weekend and will be on Friday and Saturday in the UPMC Event Center with times yet to be announced. That's all we have for RMU Sports for right now, but let's go back to the desk to John and Ryan. Coming up after the break, flooding in one of Italy's most historic cities. And Sonu Babu is back in the Weather Center to give us a full look at the weather. Stay tuned. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I... Um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look!
Welcome back to Army Life. The city of, of Venice continues to suffer from high levels of flooding. According to the city's government, the water level reached 150 centimeters, which is 59 inches, Sunday afternoon. For reference, anything over 140 centimeters, 55 inches, is considered exceptional in Venice. Scott McLean is in the iconic street, uh, iconic St. Mark's Square, and has more details. It has been a pretty tough week for Venetians. There was yet another exceptionally what? high tide that peaked at about a meter and a half. So we're in St. Mark's Square right now, which floods at about 80 centimeters. Add another 70 centimeters on top of that, and that's what we ended up with uh, in this latest round of flooding. This comes, though, after two more bouts uh, of high tide earlier this week, bouts that Venetians are frankly still cleaning up from. This has been frustrating for this city. You do not have to look hard to find a Venetian who will tell you that all of this flooding seems quite preventable. That's because there is a system, a hydraulic barrier system called MOSE, that's being built for the last 15 years though it's been plagued by corruption and scandal and mismanagement. We spoke to uh, the current mayor who told us, look, he understands the frustrations of people here, but that Mose is still the city's best way forward in the future. Now, there are two more high tides expected this week. They will be enough to flood this square, the lowest part of Venice, but thankfully not enough to cause any more damage than has already been done. In Venice, I'm Scott McLean reporting. Sonu Babu is back in the studio with a full look at the weather forecast. How's it looking out there, Sonu? Thank you, John and Ryan. Today, as we mentioned before, it's a high of 51 degrees and a low of 31 degrees. It's going to get a little cooler. If we look at our hourly forecast, it's going to get uh, cloudier and cloudier and also a little bit colder, um, as you see on your screen here. Um, at 3 p.m. it's going to be partly cloudy, 50 degrees, but at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. it's going to get colder with a high of 44 degrees and then 39 degrees. But if we take a look at tomorrow, um, it's going to be a high of 45 degrees and a low of 34. So still pretty warm, um, humidity of 76 percent, and it's going to be... Uh, have, there's going to be a higher chance of rain at 20 percent. But Let's take a look at our full weather forecast. Now, this is our five-day weather forecast, and if you take a look at your screen, you're going to see um, it's still pretty warm on Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to see some rain, but uh, Friday and Saturday, there's actually going to be a chance of snow with a high of 47 degrees and a low of 28 on Friday and 43 degrees on Saturday with a low of 31. So to towards the nighttime, it's getting a little colder. All that snow is gonna melt away on Sunday. It's gonna be partly cloudy again with a high of 44 and a low of 32. That's all I have for you today. Uh, let's go back over to John and Ryan on the desk. To learn more about all news RMU, be sure to catch RMU Focus Fridays at 1 p.m. for a twist on late night television. Stay tuned to RMU Tonight, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. And for all your updates on Robert Moore Sports, catch Colonial Sports Center Thursdays at 9.30 p.m. here on Army TV. Thank you for joining us this week and the, the entire semester with us on Army Live. For Ryan Giacobbe, Greg Sutton, Sonu Babu, and everybody in the control room and down in the studio, I'm John Blinn. We'll see you next semester.